Welcome everybody, Jose J. Garcia with Garcia Mahomes University here, Sunday Coaching Series. We're back. Got another one for y'all. I cannot believe how much trouble y'all are having with this one. Actually, I can quite a bit. So that's something we see all too often. And, you know, before I even get into this, uh, this topic here, I'm going to tell you something, whether you're in real estate or mobile home investing, uh, it's the same thing. It's the same thing for both, it's, and that's contractors. Now, before I get into any of that, I want to point something out. One bad apple ruins a brawl. Okay, I want to say that because I have many, many good contractors that they are awesome. They're on point. They're on time. They get the jobs done. They go above and beyond. I have a crew going right now in Warner Robins. And when I say right now, literally, I just got off the phone with them. So, I mean, you know, it's one of those kind of things where some people may, may not want to work or some of them don't want to work, period. Okay, so, but it's that one that makes all look kind of bad kind of thing. Now, I'll be honest with you. Yes, throughout the years, I've had many contractor crews. I've had more bad than I've had good. That's just being transparent. Okay. So again, whether you're in real estate or mobile home investing, you, you know, you're going to deal with that. That's going to come, but it all starts with you. You know, if you've hired one bad contractor and I, I hate to even say that bad, bad contractor, but if you had bad one, bad one, then you're going to get you another one because you have to keep on going. You have to get that mobile home rehab and get it out in the market. So you get your second one, but if the second one does the same thing, you go after the third one and a fourth one, I'll say at one point, you need to stop. You need to take a step back and realize what is it that is happening, okay? Because the issue may be, once again, it may be you who's not doing the proper interviews. Now, you, you may be missing mm. something in there that is struck out and you're letting it go through and you're having a repetition of the same problem over and over again. So a couple more people coming on, so I'm going to let them go for I get the rambling on here with y'all. Any questions? I'm sure there'll be a, a bit of those on this call. Save them for in the end. Of course, we'll answer all that open the floor for y'all on that. And I do have a couple of things, advertisements towards the end. So stay tuned for that as well. But uh, yeah, no, we had a meetup this weekend, this past Saturday, which is every second Saturday of the month at uh, Taco Mac in Beaufort, Georgia. That may change. I keep saying that we may start rotating, going to different areas. But it was a it's a good meetup. We had a lot of people that did not show. Uh, I understood one of. Uh, one family didn't show up. I think they may be dealing with something, maybe hopefully not COVID. So I'm glad they didn't show up. But, you know, that is still going around. So you have to play safety first. But uh, we have that advance. So definitely don't miss out on those. It's every second Saturday of every month uh, we meet up. It's a live network event. And it's just there to connect. And again, you know, surround yourself. What happened to my video? Surround yourself around the like-minded people. That, that's huge. But okay, let's get started because this is a topic that I can talk on for hours, really truthfully, and it, and it requires it, but we're going to talk into it for 30 minutes. So hardest task, whether you're in real estate or mobile home investing, it's going to be each and every time contractors. Are you hiring the right one? Are they doing the job? Are you micromanaging? That's the problem. If I have to micromanage anybody, I don't want them. Okay, one of those kind of things where and that's how I started. When I was first starting investing, I didn't know a thing about it other than I wanted to own a rental. I dealt with quite a bit of contractors with their excuses, which they had everything from I can't make it, I feel sick, or my dog ate my hammer. I don't care. It's not getting my job done. So I had to get in there and do it myself. But it taught me a lot of things. And that was a lot of things I had to decipher whether a property needs X amount of money, rehab labor, et cetera, or a contractor is just basically trying to up their pay. All that happens. Okay. So something to definitely keep in mind. Um, I'm often asked, how do you know the difference between a good one and a bad contractor, which is such a vague question, really, because, again, you know, it all goes hand in hand to how the interview starts, how you approach them, where you even find them, a contractor and how you build that relationship. A lot of investors turn contractors into friends. I don't think I need to go into much into that detail. I'll tell you, that's not a good idea. <laughs> business is business and friendship and personal is completely different. So if you do such, much like trying to rent to a family member, will you help me out this month? Will you? Same thing. Suddenly you need to spot them for this amount of money. They need this upfront, and it just turns into a bad deal. So I'll tell you, if nothing more, do not friend your contractors. Nothing personal. It's a business. If y'all would, everybody meet y'all's uh, speaker there until it is time for questions, just to avoid a little bit of background noise. Be great. Okay. So... Let me see where I was at. So how to interview a, a contractor, you know, that's going to play huge roles. Now I have a 10 step rule that I use. I'm going to go over some of that there. 
we, we go into a lot more detail, of course, if you coach directly, but it's a 10 step formula that I use and it helps me, if nothing more, decipher is this contractor even worth dealing with at this point. OK, now one thing that I'm going to point out, and I think I got the student on the call, you know, if you get a set date, which you should, you have you're supposed to have a set date for every property, every investment. How long is it going to take? That's one of the first questions that you're asking. You know, once, of course, you get through the interview, two weeks, three weeks. OK, that's the timeline they gave you. They gave you that. OK, so if you're into the fifth week on something that was supposed to take three weeks, it is time to cut them out. That they're not done. They're not finishing. Something is off. What is the issue? What is the problem? You know, I start narrowing into a lot of this at this point and finding out what is the issue in not finishing the property. Because remember, you're not making money on a property you're holding. You make money when you flip it, when you sell it, when you rent it. I want to make passive income. I don't want to expend my cash flow. Right. What's happening when you hold on to this. Um, so that being said, you know, and it's red flags. Pay attention to red flags are everywhere. OK, you have to pay attention to those. A lot of things that sound like a good thing, too good of a thing, probably is. We're going to get into that. OK, let me see. I'm trying to make notes. And the reason I make notes is because, again, I, th this is a topic that I can talk to you on for hours. And I don't want to miss the, the mo most important things on here for you. If you need additional coaching, of course, reach out to me. Uh, let me see. OK, previous work. Have you seen their previous work? If it looks anything like what my background looks like right now, that's not a very good picture to look at, okay? Now, if that's a pre, that's okay, but I want to see posts. What did it look like after you got done with it? And I want to check references. A lot of you investors are getting a lot of these contractors. that You, you do all the right things, but you don't check up behind them. I had one, one investor who, that's what he failed to do repeatedly. Well, they do give me the numbers, but I don't really have the time to. You don't have the time not to not have the time. You know, as part of the references, I want to find out who they work with, what kind of work they've done. And I want to call these numbers. I want to find out. Long story short, I had one contractor. I've said the story many times who gave me references. Yes, I'm going to call each and every reference. Absolutely. That's part of my interview. And I call this one gentleman. And basically, I mean, just, hey, I'm just going to get a reference real quick. If you don't mind, uh, my name is so-and-so and this is what I'm doing. So I have Mr. We're just going to call him John. I have Mr. John here who we're thinking about hiring. And before I could say anything else, this gentleman immediately, not so much of a gentleman now, went at the spiral of that person owes me X amount of money. I haven't found him. Where is he? What's his number? Needless to say, I end that conversation and that was between them. But I didn't hire the guy. Now, see, had I not called that person, I would have known such. OK, and I could have been the next person who he might not have done a job and took my, I don't know, my my rehab my material my money who, who knows you do all this as a thorough background with each and every one many times you're going to do everything right you're going to go down the line they're going to check out they sound legit on the phone they all do okay you get them out there and it is a pure disappointment that's just life you know one of the things i say on that is always what did you learn from that you cannot repeat the same mistake what did you miss with this one gentleman that you're not going to miss on the second one Female, male, doesn't matter. You know, I have some crews that are led by women. One of the best, by the way, not sexist. So um, I want to see their work. I want to see pictures because one of the things that I want, I want to know for sure is, do you work on mobile homes? Yes, if you work on houses, that means that, yes, you can work on a mobile home technically, but it's a different concept all around. It's a different type of living. And remember, with mobile homes, it's affordability. OK, so if they're coming from commercial, especially duplex apartments, multi-door, their mindset is a little bit differently. How do they rehab all around? Now, we don't do a cheap job like some people have said. Well, it's a cheaper job. I, I don't consider that. I consider it uh, to be presentable, livable and affordable. OK, big difference in the two. So but I want to know. I want to see their pictures. I want to see some of these jobs they've done. And I want to know how long have you been working on mobile homes? So let's jump into my steps here, my 10 steps. Might want to get a pad, pen for this, okay? So I find mobile home, uh, everything. To me at this point, it's Facebook Marketplace. It, you know, some people have asked, you know, will mobile homes in the park ever be on Zillow, Trulia, MLS, and et cetera? I don't know, probably not, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, we use Facebook Marketplace, we use Craigslist, let go classify, they were just the same or even better. So, you know, but when it comes to me finding handyman, contractors, material, homes, selling homes, et cetera, Facebook Marketplace every time. And it works. It is growing. People share your stuff. It's free. Can't miss that. It is free to use. So you have no excuse but to use it. And that's where we find our contractors. I use what it's a pre-pre-screen 
with anybody, whether you buy one of my investments or you're trying to live in one of my properties or you want to work on one, I'm going to go to your profile. Yes, this is being said in recording. I'm going to go to your profile because you're probably doing the same thing to me. I'm okay with that. And I want to see what kind of lifestyle maybe you're living because you're an employee. As a contractor coming in, you are being hired by the investor. Okay. So there's a lot of things that, you know, if you were to go get a job somewhere, corporate America, you do the same thing. You would have to do a proper interview. You'd have to do an application and go through the proper steps. So you do the same thing the other way around. Does not matter if it's your first 10 or 15th mobile home. If you're hiring somebody, they're your employee for that time being. Okay. So what do you set a contractor on an interview? What do you ask? Here's my 10 steps. Let's go ahead and jump in. them. Always start with you. Start telling them about, about you. What is it that you do? Okay. My name is Jay Garcia. I'm a mobile home investor, coaching, and just spill it all out. Let them know. I need to hire a contractor to come in and help me rehab X amount of properties. Now, you know, what I do with these mobile homes is I either turn them into rent the owns, I flip them, I sell them, just different things. I want him, her, or them to know a little bit more about me because at the end of the day, it is going to be not a friendship, but a relationship. Okay. The more they know about me, the more they can cater to me in essence when it comes to rehab and the more I learn about them obviously the more I can expect a certain way to be the job to be done no investment is the same no contractor is the same you're not going to get a contractor that works exactly like somebody else that's fine I've had two contractors in two different homes side by side and one I don't know what they're doing and the other one I know exactly what they're doing but at the end of the day they both got the job done and it was right that I'm not micromanaging and that's what I'm, I mean by micromanaging is specifics. You don't want to micromanage anybody. Tell them what you're planning on doing. Tell them that you plan on having X amount of properties. You know, one thing about any contractor is they're always wondering, where will my next job be? My next rehab. OK, when you can secure them with, hey, I can keep you busy X amount of time. As long as you need work, if you can do a good job for me, we can stay on a timeline. You know, we can pay you. X amount, we'll talk, we'll get into that and we can keep you busy. And that's how I'm managing to get the, the, all kinds of contracts from all over is because I continue steady work. You may say, well, I'm only going to do one. So I really can't say that. Well, do you not know another investor that may need a handyman or contractor? Okay. I can see about five people on this call right now that I know need a contractor. So that'd be an easy one. And that's part of the networking. That's why you want to network and know, you know, when you do these local reels, for instance, that you're at the meetups or shadows or whatever, every time you should be getting everybody's phone number. Why? Because all of y'all are in the same thing for the same reason at the end of the day, money. We're in it for returns on our investments, right? So is it possible that we may run into an issue that somebody else might've already ran into? These are all tips I'm giving you right now, okay? Let's keep going. Third one, okay? Uh, from the minute you begin talking to them, you need to start reading them. You need to just pay attention. Little, little things that they're going to be saying. Uh, you, you try to catch all the above. Just I'm trying to fill out these people and see, is this, is this somebody I want to deal with? You know, I'm not too much for hearing cur curse words of every angle. So if that's all I hear from the get go as an interview, that's not very professional from their side. That alone may not be something I want to deal with. OK, so again, but it's all about paying attention to those those red flags. Any questions that y'all have at this time, make sure you drop them on the on the chat box there. I'll answer them all accordingly. I don't want you to forget about them, of course. All right. Next one, number four. So you ask them to tell you about the kind of rehabs they've done in mobile homes. What parks have you worked in? What kind of mobile homes have you worked on? Are these single wides, double wides, three bedroom, two bath? Have you ever converted a three two into a two twos? Okay, what kind of material did you use? Get all these specifics. Try to again, you're filling these people out and seeing what is their real true knowledge. Do they really know what they're talking about? Or yes, I've used a contractor before who had never worked in a mobile home. They did okay but it was a lot of things that they were learning as they were going along. And had I done my proper due diligence early on, I would have realized that's not the best way to go about it. Does not mean you can't give somebody a chance, but again, you know, this is a business at the end of the day and it qualifies like anywhere else is I want I want somebody that knows what they are doing when they're getting into these mobile homes. Mobile homes are special in a way. They're built very differently from factory out. The material is not the same as what you find in a house. So I don't want to have this issue, if nothing more, of them trying to build a house inside of a mobile home. And you'll have that, by the way. Okay. Um, 
real estate indifference. Somebody asked us at the at the meetup as well. You know, biggest difference that they have, by the way, is uh, the two by fours is huge because all throughout the entire property, they're not built with two by fours. They're built by two by threes, which is a two by four missing an inch. They do all this for uh, weight reasons when they have to travel. Don't forget, mobile homes are mobile. So they have to be able to transport and meet a certain amount of weight. But in the same sense, on the inside of the mobile homes, you have things like sinks. And it depends on the, the age, the year, make, model age of the home, of course. But you have tubs, you have sinks, you have countertops, you have cabinets. These are not the same size that you can just go to a home improvement store and say, give me this, that, those, and then some of that. And you're going to take it back and it fits. Even a door. If you go into a 1980s mobile home, you're going to realize this door is very narrow. Well, that's the way they built them back then. So you can't go find that door at a home improvement store. Now, they do have mobile home stores, okay? And we coach you this, uh, GMHU, of course, coaching, but you don't have to go through those extents, nothing, nothing against these stores. But as with anything you buy specific of, it costs more. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to stay within affordability, and we're trying to spend at least out of pocket so that our ROIs will keep them better. So a little trick for you, real long story short on that one quick, is take a door from a home improvement store, cut an inch from every side, and you got one to fix your house. Let's move on, okay? Do you have a crew or work alone? That is a question that you need to ask. I don't want to hire one person. Now, if it's a mobile home that needs a cleanup, maybe housekeeping, or maybe just needs a sink replaced, okay, I don't need a crew coming in here. But if it's a rehab, like what you're seeing on the background of my screen here, I need a crew. I, I need three, four guys. I, I need a team to come in here. And that's what I want to hire. Anybody that works alone is not going to be very efficient, not as quickly, obviously, because it's one man doing all the jobs. And I'll, don't forget that if it's a one man doing all the jobs, does he or she know all the above? I don't know what that property or investment may need that you have, but do they know how to do electrical, plumbing? Okay. Do they know how to fix a roof if it leaks? What about ceilings, painting, flooring? All these are questions that you need to be asking. And, and again, you know, the more you come around the mobile homes, the more you're going to understand them, the more you're going to be able to talk to them. And then not so much just kind of BS, y'all say that. Okay. I've had contractors who I'm interviewing and I've already seen a property and we do a thorough interview before they even make it to the property, but I'll have them go out there and check out a room. Tell me about that floor you see in the corners there. I noticed that they were a little bouncy. They're kind of mushy. I know it's part of the boards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. We're going to have to replace the entire floor. I, I love when they tell me that. We're going to have to tear this whole carpet out and replace the entire floor, maybe some of this wall. So my question is always question them. What, why is that? Why do you think you need to tear the entire floor, some of the wall, and all the carpet needs to go? Well, when you have nonsense. Well, here's what we're going to do. Because this our affordable living. Now, we don't do a crap job again. But we do fix what's broken and what is not, we leave it alone. There is one section in that floor and in that corner that's a little mushy. I get it. It's probably leaking moisture from the outside. We need to fix it. So we're going to cut out that section and replace that one section alone. The carpet may even be good. When you start letting them know that you know what you're talking about, they're going to realize, okay, this guy, this lady, whoever it is, they, they're not going to be ones that I can just come in and make excess, you know, try to make X amount of money on because they know what they're talking about. This happens over a period of time, the more time you spend out there. I said, don't micromanage them. I didn't say you cannot go out there and visit them. Ask questions. Why did you change this out? What does this do? You know, just get to learning these things. The better you get at it, the better you're going to be able to manage the next, next crew. So learn to definitely ask questions on that. Um. Are they licensed, insured? A question. That's huge. Should they be? Should they be licensed or insured before they work? You know, with our coaching, we have a pretty in-depth uh, application that we have every contract fill out. Once they do an interview, we send them out to the property. They check out, kind of give us a quote so that we know we're in the same ballpark, same ball field, if nothing more. And we see that, okay, this gentleman, this crew, these people here, they have potential. So let's move on to the next step. We have a form that we send them because we want every detail from them, including their license, insurance, et cetera. Should you hire without a license and insurance, we'll leave that for another coaching call. Okay. But we do have that one form that we give them out. And it's very extensive because you want all the information from them that you need before they get started. How soon can they start? Here's where a red flag is enormous for you all. Now you're thinking, I got a property. I'm behind. I got to get this thing rehabbed. It was supposed to be done. I I'm going to mess with you, Reggie. 50 days ago. <laughs> and it's not. Okay. So I need just anybody. Well, you're about to make the same mistake if you're rushing to get the second guy. 
So this is where you need to take a step back, pause, and really thoroughly interview, okay? I want something, I, I don't want the same issue to happen the first time, the second time. But one of the questions is, how soon can you get started? Oh, I can get started right now. Now, that sounds charming. Oh, right now. Okay, we're going to be done in a week. And Okay, one thing about a contractor or a handyman that is good, a good handyman or contractor is always busy, always. You almost have to go prime from other jobs to get them over here. Once I get them over here, I'm going to keep them busy. He ain't going anywhere. But to get them over there, he may say, oh, it's going to be a couple of weeks, three weeks before you get to it. It is worth the wait. It may be aggravating, but if that's the best they can do, you know, and of course you can negotiate with them. Well, can you come in the evenings on the weekends, maybe get a start at something, you know, you can definitely talk in that sense, but you know, as much as that is aggravating, that's what I want to hear. He who says I can start right now, that's a red flag. You are not busy for a reason. There's something off now, benefit of the doubt. Okay. Maybe they just got through finished with the job. And remember, I did say that they're always looking for the next one, but most good handyman contractors usually have jobs lined up, whether it's one, the same person or different people, they're always busy. So that's a red flag that you really need to look into. Why are you not working right now? What is the issue kind of thing? And ask, you know, don't be scared, nervous to ask, because again, these are people that you're going to, in a sense, turn into your employees. They're going to not only be your employee, but they're going to be in your home. These people are responsible for rehabbing something that somebody's going to live in. So questions, questions, ask them. Material breakdown, that'd be number nine. How to shop for them. Where do they shop for their material? Again, if they just build houses, apartments, or rehab them, it's, you know, probably Home Depot or Lowe's is probably where they're going to have to go. I want to ask them, do you ever do off-market shopping? You know, with us in mobile home investing, we use, again, Craigslist, let go, classify, offer up, Facebook Marketplace. This call is being recorded, by the way. I know I'm speaking fast. I've been coaching all day. It's good, though. It's good stuff. Okay, so I want to know where they're getting the material. Many times a contractor, you, you know, like anything else, you know, contractor is going to have their connections and they can get cheaper flooring, lumber. Dang gosh, because right now lumber is excessive. But if they can get you cheaper material, it may be worth paying them, you know, out of pocket to get them to get that and not go through a store. But we do have a system as to how we pay home improvement stores. You should never pay. Let me toss this in there. You should never pay a contractor up front any money. They don't need upfront money. Well, I need money so that I can buy material. Ain't got to worry about that. We got a we, we got a system set up with Home Home Depot and Lowe's. So if you need that, you just give us a call and we'll pay over the phone. So that eliminates that. You get paid even a portion once you've done some work, not before you get started. Explain pay. That's the next one. Number 10. Notice this is the last one, by the way. Number 10 step. If you start interviewing any contractor handyman, and one of the first things they're talking about is, how do you pay? When can I get my first pay? Money, money, money. They're not looking after you. They're looking after their pocket. They may be in need of money. That's understandable. But I want them to be a little more focused on the job, the task. I, I believe in proving yourself before starting to collect anything. And I do that with anywhere I go, even in corporate America. I want to prove me before I started asking for anything. So in the same way, I want that in return. I want them to be focused on what they're going to do, how they can save us money. We're a team now. Save us money, how we're going to get this job quickly, because the faster I can sell this thing or rent to own it, whatever, the more I can get, the more I can keep them busy. They may be thinking one chicken out if they're saying that. So always keep it at that. But the way you pay them is always by job. Not a salary, not an hourly. As my coaches would say, salary and hourly makes lazy employees. And it does. What can take 10 minutes suddenly took two hours. Why? Because they get paid for two hours. Why should they speed up? So we pay by the job. What do I mean by the job in a mobile home? Okay, break it down. The roof, that's one job. The ceiling, that's another job. Painting walls, that's another job. Flooring, another job. You get the gist. Every time you finish something, Mr. Contractor, you can get paid. You know what that means? It means you can get paid every day. How about that? Every day I can, I can pay you. Better, better check out. I don't want you over rushing either because I want the job done right. But putting it this way, suddenly, no salary, no hourly, they want to get paid every day. Who doesn't? And suddenly that one that was going to take two weeks gets done in seven days and gets done right. That's what you want. Questions? I've uh, got a couple here. Let's see. All right. Um, make sure y'all pay attention to the chat box, by the way. Uh, a lot of you, we may not have your email. You're not part of our database just yet, so you want to send it to us so we can add you. Um, yep, yep. Okay. Any questions? Y'all have no questions? It's either late Sunday or I'm a 
but test the coach. Which one is it? Nobody has any questions. You know, you do this one step, and, and I know I went a little quickly on my 10-step rule that I do. Are you still going to get a back contractor from time to time? I'd be lying to you if I said no, because we do. We just had a setback about three months ago in central Georgia where we had a contractor who just flat out refused to keep working. Just bottom line, he was not going to show up anymore. When he did, he'd do little to nothing. Days went by and we couldn't tell if he was moving stuff around the room or actually doing something, but he did not get the job done and he ended up just flaking out. That happens, which is unfortunate, especially, you know, when they guarantee jobs. But overall, regardless of we're all people at the end of the day, things will happen. One thing that I can suggest for you all is get backups. You should never have one guy. OK, funny thing about that is now in the same area where I'm working on, of course, we have X amount of properties. I, I don't mind waiting a week, two weeks if I need to. You know, I trust the guys that I have. So I'll say, well, you, I'm going to go ahead and wait on you for this one or I may go ahead and get so and so. Now, when you have more than one crew going in one area, it's almost like they're in a little professional, good way, competitive, and they're trying to get to the next property before the other guy gets it and the next property, which is all great <laughs> because it keeps them going. But they know, hey, I can be replaced. And just like anything else, you know, keep them steady, keep them working, congratulate them. You know, it, it is not uncommon for me to show up if I'm in an area, maybe checking out other real estate uh, investments or whatnot. I may stop and just get them all lunch. It goes a long way. So you are building a relationship. Unfortunately, not a friendship. So keep it on that. Let me see. A um, couple of questions coming in on here. What are some uh, sources to get material from besides Lowe's and Home Depot? You know, I say investing in mobile homes is a teamwork. It cannot be just you. If you're out getting deals, selling deals, et cetera, who is actually doing uh, the shopping? I can't have a contractor go to Home Depot or Lowe's every time he or she needs something because that's not how you save money. A lot of the material that we use comes from off market, Craigslist, let go, classify, offer up, Facebook market again. OK, you go on there and you may need cabinets. You know, a lot of times people are giving stuff away for free just because they want it out of their house. You have people who had just rehab a three, four hundred thousand dollar home and the contractors left all kinds of material in their garage and they just want it gone. They're not even selling it. If you come over and get these seven sheets of plywood and these X amount of sheets of sheetrock, you can have it. That's saving you money. Now, shop wisely. If you're spending three hours to go pick up a sink that you would have been better off just getting new, then you're not being so smart about that either. You see what I'm saying? So, But don't just depend also on going and browsing these sites that I just mentioned on who is selling or who is giving away. You can advertise yourself. A lot of people who have stuff like that in their garage, they're not going to go advertise, hey, I have so-and-so come and get it because they don't know who to trust. But if you put your own ad up there, hey, I'm a mobile home investor. I'm looking for material. I could really use some plywood at this time, some uh, electrical, whatever. Put a list. People will reach out to you. Hey, I was just thinking about getting rid of some of this here. If you want to come and get it. These are tips I'm giving you are huge. It's going to save you money. So definitely write that down. What is the next one? When you have a fire, when you have a contract, when you have a fire contract, how do you transition to another internal section? Uh, I mean, that message was sent to me directly. Uh, I believe I can read it on here. But uh, when you have to fire a contractor, how do you transition to another and determine what was actually done? So you will have to go out there and inspect it, review it, or maybe your new one that you have coming in as a replacement. They'll have to go in and tell you what was done, what was not done. Uh, that the previous one you had to get rid of, you, you know, had to, for me to fire a contractor, I mean, it's, it takes a bit, you, you know, I give them chances. I understand that people get sick, things do happen, life is there, but I want to know that this is not nonsense or they simply got another job, that it's a little more priority than mine. You know, if they are trying to show an initiative, I'm going to work with them to a certain extent. So, you know, it's not a quickest, uh, you're two days late, you're fired. It don't work that way either. But uh, you would have to get somebody else. To, if you don't know what you're looking at, you will need to get the second contractor to go in there and tell you, hey, this and this isn't done. This isn't finished or worse. This was done incorrectly. We've heard a lot of that when we've had to get rid of people. OK, any more questions? Y'all can drop the questions on there. I'm going to stick around for about a couple more minutes on here. A couple advertisements for y'all. So. Um, Let's do deal set out uh, Tuesday coming up Tuesday, 7 p.m. We should have some new inventory. So 
those of you wondering why is there not as much inventory coming in at this time, we are in transitioning. GMHU is growing. It's a beautiful thing. We're blessed. And at this time, we're picking departments. We're going to have a lot more sales agents in. We're going to have reps. You're going to be talking to a lot more people than just myself very soon. So it's going to help out. I know a lot of times when you message me now, you may see a delay. We cannot have that. I like to be very, very quickly responsive to that. So that's kind of what we're working on, structuring the business, if you will. And then, uh, but we are going to get a lot more inventory. We have new areas. We have about 30 coming out of South Carolina. A few of you have been asking about that. We have a lot in South Carolina. We have some more in Tennessee coming up. And we do have a individual, a rep, a student here that uh, is working more closely with us. It's going to go inspect a lot of the Northern state inventory. So we'll have some insight on that as well, but we'll keep all that coming. So that's every Tuesday at 7 PM. It's, it's not limited to a membership yet. So make sure you join us on there next Saturday. A lot of you are still wondering, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you, you know, what if you could ask a contractor questions yourself? You can ask me if you want, I'll answer you directly. But if you can have a contractor in front of you and ask them, how would you fix this area here in the mobile home? That's what the shadow event is for. The shadow event next Saturday at 10 a.m. will be in central Georgia, where we're going to have typical shadow event. We have contractors, handyman, we have uh, park management, park owners. We have them all there. It's a four-hour event. If you have already done it, you know what I'm talking about. If you know somebody that should be doing it, send them my way. You can, they can visit GarciaMHU.com and sign up. Um, that is a four-hour event, and I see more investors come out of that than any other coaching we have. So definitely don't miss out on that one. We'll be out there checking out properties. We have quite a bit of inventory as well. So potential that you may invest in that. One more question here. Do you get contractors to give you a bid before purchasing the property or do you bring them? In? So that question, do you get a contractor to give you a bid before purchasing a property or do you bring, do you bring them in after you've already bought the mobile home? How's the process? You can do, so I already know what I'm willing to pay for the investment. You know, when I walk them over home, I can go in and out within five minutes and I can tell I'm looking at about 4,000 labor material here, but I've also done 400 transactions. So I kind of picked up quite a bit of, you know, information on that. But if you're new to this, I would highly suggest, no, do not lock up a property or investment because that, that property could have tons of electrical issues. Maybe the roof is caving in. I, I don't know. It could be a lot more than what you're thinking of an investment. And you cannot make an investment be a good or bad investment unless you know the numbers. So I would suggest, yes, if you need to send a contractor handyman in there, hey, go in and give me a quote on what you think it'll take to rehab. You can even ask them, how much material do you think it'll take on that? They have a good idea. This is what they do each and every day. So they can tell you, you're looking about $2,500 for me and probably about another $2,000 for material. There you go. You got yourself at least an idea of what it's going to cost. Plus, then, of course, you count the property and add all the other numbers and you see where you're at at that point. Let's see. How many quotes do you get for a property? I used to use the rule of three. But again, you know, my contract is pretty steady now. So um, I don't really bid them one or the other kind of thing if, if I do need to feel the need of negotiating is usually with them directly. Like, uh, you know, as much as that may be the case, you know, if we can drop that by around $500, I think we're in and we agree to something. So, you know, it's one of those kind of things, but uh, if you're still having a debate between contractors and still trying to find the better of, I would say stick with the rule of three and see where they're at at that point. All right. We've, uh, past 8 30 so we're going to go ahead and be done here i've already advertised what we got coming on definitely hope to see all of you who have not joined a shadow next saturday we'll be live can't wait for that event one of my favorites i love coaching in person uh one more question let me answer before i go what's the turnaround time to get quotes from your contractor very good question right away here's the thing when i have a contractor and i interview them and i'll tell them hey i'm okay everything else looks good um what i like to do next is let me send you out to the property and get you to give me a quote and suddenly they're oh well i can get there next week or next saturday or maybe this or that you know that is the first initiative that they're showing to me and that's what they're really proving me if it takes you a week and i have to beg you for the quote that's probably how it's going to be when you get in there rehab when you're going to put this door up yeah, 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 I'm going to get to it. What about this cabinets? Ugh, been so busy. You're about to get a lot of that. So that's one of those things where if I ask for a quote, I need the quote ASAP. Okay. That's the last question that people calling me to. So, but all right, 
Everybody have a great night. Thank you for joining me as always. Hope to see you Tuesday. Till next time.